episode 58. Like maybe I can just do a little hand puppetry. Uh, welcome, Drink with James, episode 58. America is another year older, and I would say much worse for the wear, honestly. We've had a pretty fucking tough year, uh, and I think it's showing, you know, like if, if, if America was an influencer, I think that there'd be there's certainly a lot of contouring videos to be watching, there'd be a lot of fine lines to be covering up. Uh, we've had a rough one, uh, but you know, we persist, we're still around. Uh, Trump hasn't wiped us off the face of the earth yet, though not without trying. I'm sure he'll get there eventually. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed your 4th of Julys. Um, I drank my weight in rosé uh, and sat on my patio and did nothing um, as far as watching fireworks. I, you know, I had a thought this morning. I, and I'm interested to hear something in the comments from y'all. I realized I probably haven't opened Snapchat in two weeks. Haven't even opened the app. And I used to be like, I was fucking in love with Snapchat. I loved it. I thought it was incredible. And I, yeah, just realized the other day that I literally haven't even opened the app in two weeks. I used to still, I used to still, even though I haven't published there in six months, I would still go and watch people's <clears throat> Snapchat stories. But like every time I opened it, less and less people seem to be publishing there. And now I have, there's maybe five or 10 people that I follow that out of the 150 that I follow that are actively publishing on Snapchat. So I just haven't opened it. Are you guys still using Snapchat? Are you, are you looking at it? Are you publishing there? I know a lot of influencers kind of keep their Snapchat a little more like, you know, less filtered and their Insta stories is a bit more for business, which I think totally makes sense. Um, but I'm even seeing less and less than that. I'm seeing just less influencers posting on Snapchat at all. So are you using it? Are you not? I'm interested, just personally. Okay, let's get to the questions. When I talk about doing video, am I talking about YouTube? And if so, how do you grow there? So, first of all, I'm not just talking about YouTube when I'm talking about video. Um, Instagram video, Facebook, you know, YouTube, all the platforms, all the video, all the time, do it. Um, so obviously, you know, YouTube should be a pretty big focus of your, of your video kind of strategy, but I think if you're just starting to dabble in it, um, Facebook is weighing like video so heavily in the algorithm right now that Facebook videos are just absolutely fucking blowing up and Facebook Live is crazy. I was talking to someone the other day, an influencer that was saying that like, you know, when they do a Facebook Live video, they're just getting unbelievable engagement because Facebook is just pushing it so much. So it's not just YouTube. I think, you know, look, Tim and I have been doing this show for over a year. It's certainly, you know, gotten some traction, but YouTube is tough. It's hard to grow a following on YouTube and it's something that you have to just do consistently. Now, we don't have huge view numbers, but you know, we're getting something like 13,000 minutes a week of watch time, um, which is a decent amount of time spent watching these videos. So, you know, there's a, there's a, but this is the 58th one, you know, so there's a pretty big, like, I'm not gonna say it's a treasure chest, because I don't think that there's actually treasure in it, but a chest of content there. So if you find your way into Drink With James episode 30, there's, you know, 57 other ones that you can go back and watch, so the, the watch time gets kind of long. So I think YouTube is, is, you know, it takes a while, I think obviously virality and getting a video that gets shared a lot is really helpful. Um, you know, I've, I've seen that like a lot of those hacks work, uh, concealer hacks, lipstick hacks, whatever hacks, people are searching for that kind of stuff a lot. And so I think you can keep an eye on that and, and see what videos are popping up in your feeds that are doing well and try and make videos like that if you're trying to grow. But like all things in social, as we talk about all the time, I think a lot of it is just, it's just a time game. It's putting the time in, it's being consistent. It's having a point of view, it's doing something different, it's continuing to get better and better, it's working with other influencers, it's working with people that know what they're doing on that platform and collaborating, it's working with great brands and getting reposted, it's, it's hundreds and hundreds of little things to grow your following on any platform, YouTube's no different. But you don't have to just be doing YouTube if you're doing video, there's other, there's other places that kind of dabble and try things and I would, I would definitely suggest 
Again, Facebook and Instagram, just because I think the algorithms are, are weighted pretty heavily towards video right now, because that's what they're pushing, um, it's worth trying. On the show, I think I have a, a tendency to, when I'm talking about things, just talk about Instagram. And, and part of the reason is I'd say, you know, 75% of what brands are asking for from us on a paid basis is, is Instagram focused. Um, and if it's, you know, a lot of times there's other platforms involved, but Instagram is kind of the anchor of the, of the program and, and of the campaign. And so your Instagram numbers and engagement and growth and follower count and all of those things are super important to being able to get you in the door to get those deals. Um, strong blog traffic alone, it, it is something that, you know, we focus on and of course, uh, you know, of course YouTube is huge, right? Like YouTube is massive and YouTube, like the big YouTubers are, are probably making more money than any other type of influencer um, because the, the premium on video is, is just so high. Uh, I'd probably say three to four X what you get on an Instagram post, you can get on a YouTube video with the same amount of uh, subscribers to followers. So YouTube massively important, you know, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Tumblr, all these other, your blog, all these other platforms, they're important to, to kind of round out the story. Um, and they certainly can be really helpful for brands. They're probably not going to do much for deal flow. Okay. So what I mean there is that how are you getting inbound deals right now? I think most of them are probably coming through Instagram. And Instagram is this really public thing. Here's the problem. And I know influencers who have this problem. You've, let's say you get 200,000 uniques a month to your blog, but you have 5,000 Instagram followers. The problem is nobody knows you get 200,000 uniques to your blog. They see 5,000 Instagram followers and they say, oh, this person doesn't have any influence, you know? Um, so it's tough because those numbers aren't public. Um, it's harder for brands to want to reach out to you and say, oh, what kind of traffic are you getting? Because most people that don't have big social numbers probably don't have big blog numbers. But I very much we have seen that happen. Um, and it is something in our campaigns when, when you know, a brand is looking to drive traffic, when they're looking to drive sales, when they're looking to do some things that aren't done super effectively on Instagram, we will use Forecard and we can, we can sort the directory on Forecard by unique visitors or you know, page views on people's blogs. So we, we have done that where we work with influencers who have a really healthy blog traffic and sometimes those people don't have huge social followings. Um, that is more rare than common, um, which I guess I could just say that's rare. Uh, it doesn't really happen all that often. So again, it, it, the blog is important, but Instagram is, is, is like your marketing platform. That's the thing that's going to bring people in right now. And that might change over time, but right now that is the, that's the thing that, that you need to get that deal flow that you're looking for. So it's super important. Um, and try and get those blog, if you, if you have big blog numbers or you have big Pinterest numbers or wherever it might be, Twitter, whatever it is, try and get those people into your Instagram um, somehow uh, because it, it's, it's definitely going to help you more than at this point probably focusing on, you know, if, I, if you said, okay, well, I could take my blog traffic from 100,000 to 150,000 uniques a month or I could take my Instagram from 20,000 to 70,000 people, what's more important? Get in your Instagram. 50,000 more followers would be much more important than getting that blog traffic up. So try and focus on that. Brand hasn't paid you. You still want to work with them, um, but they haven't paid you. How do you handle that without ruining the relationship? First of all, if a brand says they're going to pay you in 30 days and they don't pay you in 30 days, they're fucking you and you shouldn't feel like you can't go to them and say, Hey, like you said, you were going to pay me. I need to be paid. Um, I actually just saw there's a freelance isn't free clause in, in at least in New York city where, you know, these brands are now can now pay pretty big penalties if they push freelancer payments off for too long. Um, I don't, I can't think of any scenario where a brand is late on payment and you are following up on that payment and that ruins your relationship. If, if, 
trying to get paid for the work that you've done ruins your relationship with the brand, then that's not a brand you want to work with. Now, again, uh, sometimes this, sh this stuff just happens, okay? Like, I, I, I just sent an email today for uh, expenses. I, I, like, I went on a trip with a brand two years ago, and I still haven't gotten the $600 back in expenses that I put on my card, and I was just sent another email. Hey, guys, like, just uh, wondering if I could get that money. Um, you have to be the squeaky wheel. A lot, of these, a lot of these companies have, the big companies, okay, let me step back. Two things happen of late payments. One, it's a huge company and it just hasn't been put through accounting in the correct way and you just have to keep following up over and over. And a lot of times if it's a bigger company, I will actually just call and try and get connected to accounting. So go around your person that you're working with. Because I understand you don't want to ruin the relationship with the person who's hiring you. And end of the day, they're not writing the check at a big company. So you can call accounting and say, hey, my name is Jane Smith. I, you know, I've got an invoice here, invoice number 427 uh, for you know, $1,500. It's, it's past due, wondering what's going on there. And they could say, oh, nothing's been submitted there. So sometimes what happens is the person you're dealing with says like, oh yeah, I sent that to accounting, but they definitely didn't and then they just forgot. Um, so call accounting, try and get connected directly with them um, so you don't bother the person you work with. But the other thing that happens is it's a small company and cash flow is, is tight and at smaller companies, they pay the people who ask, who keep asking first. So if you, if you never follow up on your payment, they're just probably not gonna pay you until you keep following up. And again, that, I really don't think you can ruin a relationship with the brand unless you get indignant. So, you know, the last part of the question was like, how do I, how do I like push them on payment without losing the relationship? Don't get all high and mighty and be like, this is my job. I need to be paid, blah, 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 blah. I didn't, you know, I don't like, I don't like scare tactics. I don't like uh, people that are like, I'm not going to do any more work for you until I get paid. That, that will probably ruin your relationship with the brand um, because again, you could have a situation where the person who's hiring you is not in the accounting department. And so if you're like, I'm not doing any more work until you pay me, you're, you're kind of saying, I don't trust that you're gonna pay me. Um, I, you know, in my years in working freelance,